Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a review for Love and Hip Hop ATL Season 6, Episode 13. Almost at the end, you guys. Let's get to it, shall we? I guess we're going to start with Jocelyn, considering they completely cut her out of that Jamaica trip. I did not know that there was this type of love out here in the world to Bonnie Bella could belong. <laughs> it's like, what kind of English was that? <laughs> she said she just want to keep her safe. She wants to keep her happy. She wants to be the best mom that she can be. She loves her baby girl. And with all the shit that she's gone through in her life, she wants to make sure that her little girl doesn't go through that. And one of the things that she wants to avoid is Bonnie would grow up without her father. I just want my daughter to have a relationship with her father. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. She tells us that um, Stevie J wants her to move back into the house with him. And because they're in a good place and they're trying to make sure that they raise their baby girl together, she is considering doing that. They are going to be one big happy family. Now, later on, we see Jocelyn at the park with the disappointment that is lovely Mimi. <laughs> I don't think they ever made such a hype over a new character, and she turned out to be such a flat nobody. But whatever. You know, Jocelyn was just like, it's time for her to meet the new Puerto Rican princess, Little Bonnie Bella. Mimi, she's there with her kids. And they sit down on the park bench while her kids are playing, and she's just like, oh! you know she looks just like stevie you know how are you she hasn't seen jocelyn in a while i'm still the same person it's just the priorities is entirely different so she's saying that she's basically got to get her grown woman on you know she tells us how she was on the reel and that she was a hit and they asked her to come back for a second time and she's probably going to be doing guest hosting every now and, ag and again jocelyn is on the incline so now she just got to be right you know she's not going to leave and run to Miami and be with her family, you know, because she's got big things popping. I don't want my daughter to grow up without her father. She tells her that she and Stevie J are going to work things out. So, you know, lovely Mimi was like, good for you, and okay, you know, and then she brings up Tommy, and I was just like, girl, why are you bringing up Tommy? That is a bad subject for Jocelyn. You could tell immediately that her feelings switched. She tells her that they've been hanging out, and you know, Jocelyn, she's like, what you do? you just behind, you know when the kid's not around <laughs> and she was just like no nothing like that you know so she's trying to plead tommy's case to jocelyn all of a sudden she asking too many fucking questions all right here with your little sideline questions don't get slapped ho jocelyn was just like i don't feel comfortable with you asking my, me all these questions and it really has nothing to do with you so i'm gonna give you a little bit of advice i like you you know in the atl watch how you ask questions and how you move around Okay, before somebody had to whoop that ass. Then we see Jasmine, you guys. And Jasmine said, because old D-Lo done cut her off, and I guess Thin Vings ain't got no fucking money, and neither does the other bitch that's supposed to be with them. You know, she had to go back to work. Because there's always money on the pole. Except there's one problem. You know, because she didn't got into this relationship with D-Lo, her name is all over the blogs. Everybody knows who her face is. You know, she can't even dance without motherfuckers asking her about D-Lo and this damn bastard baby. <laughs> Should call him that. <laughs> motherfuckers be calling her the sideline hoe. And she says, that shit is humiliating. I said, oh, that's humiliating. All the rest of this that you decided to do, being in the threesome with thin things and all, girl, you fucking around with a married man and supposedly sleeping with a whole bunch of other people in the damn strip club. Oh, so that didn't humiliate. Well, I'm glad she has some standards. Anyway, she decides that she can't do this dance thing no more. She's leaving work. And who should be there but Logan? Okay, oh, Lord. Here go this motherfucker stalking me. Somebody from my past want to come back around. And, you know, he just give me the blue stuff. So she decides she's going to try to ignore him. But he's all like, you know, he want to talk to her. He follows, follows her out to the parking lot. She's just trying to get in the van so she can get on back home. He was just like, oh, so you want to ignore me now? Don't call me later when you need something. She tells us that Logan is mad that they can't be together anymore. So, you know, they argue when he goes up to the damn van door and uh, she jump up and she was like, you a bitch. So then she get out of the damn van and security comes up. But she do get one good bust of the nigga face in. And I said, oh, that shit connected real fast. They cut the camera, but we heard it. So that's when he was real mad. Yeah, bitch, I'm going to fuck your life up. And she was just like, fuck you. And such and such, you know. 
all this arguing with brother man in the parking lot. So then she take it on back home to Thin Fing and old girl. And uh, she telling them what happened. Do you know this nigga came down to the strip club and was trying to confront me about the baby? Thin Fing was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, Shanae, he started thinking like, carry the one. <laughs> He was just like, why are all these motherfuckers coming out the woodwork and saying that my girl is fucking them too? Is there some truth to this? You really believe everything she tell you, Thin Ving? She did get pregnant while you was in jail, supposedly, by D-Lo, right? So now he's trying to figure out if the Frost Facts then brought in somebody new. Did they pay this little nigga, Logan, to say that he fucked Jasmine so that could take some of the heat off of D-Lo? Or did Jasmine fool around with Logan? I mean, we can't put it above them. They tried it with Jock, supposedly, right? But uh, Jasmine is holding to her word. No, no, no. The world is going to know soon enough that he is the father, speaking of D-Lo. Okay, well, why the fuck we ain't took no damn DNA test? Well, you know what? I can't find the nigga. He just been real slippery. I said, girl, this is sweet baby Ray. <laughs> Anyway, she was like, I can't find him. He don't be at the apartment. He don't be at the house that they done built. I said, the nigga is in Jamaica, girl. Ask Mona where he is. And then speaking of Jamaica, you guys, so you know all the girls are there and they enjoying themselves at the secret resort. Carly is mad that Jock brought treasure. We don't like it. We don't see it for treasure because treasure fucks around with married men. As a matter of fact, Tammy was looking at her like, bitch, I know you. You was the one that Tommy was talking about fighting, beating the bitch ass in the damn pedicure. Yes, yes, you like to sleep with married men. Treasure was like, no, I don't like to sleep with married men. It was just this one time. They don't see it for Treasure. Already giving her the side eye or whatever, okay? Next thing we know, we see Waka. He's on the stage. Surprise, surprise. Not only is Jock there, but Waka's there. You know, he do whatever the fuck song he do. We get some little fake small turn up, you know, and Tammy is just looking like, mm. All right, but you saw Jock, so you had to know that he was on his way as well. Afterwards, she was like, you know, she did appreciate the gesture, but she going to act fake mad just so he don't feel like he got it like that, okay? This is a girl's trap. This is supposed to be independent me, you know? I'm here having a good time, and then you show up. I don't show up where you show up. He was like, you can show up wherever you want to now. I didn't got rid of the holes, or better yet, I didn't got my side holes in check now. I don't fuck around them with the messy ones no more. <laughs> no, I hope that walk ain't fucking around on that girl. She can't take it one more time around. Anyway, she's glad that her man is there. Who wouldn't be glad that they man came to Jamaica, okay? Got all this free shit and you can't even share it with nobody. Jock also tells them while they sitting at the table that uh, Waka and Jock not the only one there. You know, he kind of do his eyes over at the damn bar and here go D-Lo ass, you know, just kind of sitting over there like, well, Rashida. <laughs> Rashida look over at him. She was just like, this is when I leave. Because ain't nobody fucking around with that nigga today. She get up and, you know, he come over and sit at the table when she walk away. And he was just like, I knew once I came here, you know, Rashida wasn't going to want to talk. Rashida was like, nigga, you ain't took no fucking test. Yet and still, you show up on my damn vacation when I'm trying to fuck you. I can't understand what the hell he did come for. But I guess he figured he'd get some dibs on the free trip as well. Later on, Rashida tells us, you know, how she's feeling about things. You know, she feels betrayed. D-Lo has been her best friend, you know, for most of her adult life. They grew together, and now he do some shit like this. She tried to go to Jamaica and get away from her problems, and then the problems brought their ass to the island. And baby, she tired of his lame-ass excuses, but... She's going to give him this one more chance to maybe explain himself because maybe since he came here, he got something else for her. She can't make a decision on whether she's going to leave him until she hears him out. She tells him about, you know, young Logan coming to the store. And, uh, you know, D-Lo's just like, that's what I was trying to say. I told you that they was con artists. And we still not going to talk about the fact that you fucked a bitch. We ain't forgot that, D-Lo. Even if there is no baby, you admitted to fucking around with this girl because... Your woman was at work all the time. Rashida was like, nigga, I don't care about the fact that they con artists and everything, okay? You need to take this damn DNA test. All of a sudden, D-Lo is all in it. I'm going to meet with a lawyer, and we're going to take this test, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. And I was just like, child, these frost facts. I promise you I can't take too much more of it. So Mimi tells us, I came here to hang with my girls and have a good time. Spice invited us to a day party. 
and included the guys. And since Tammy and Rashida said it's fine, then I guess it's cool. Dime tells us that she mad that her man didn't show up. You know, all the other niggas didn't show up and, you know, she all there by her lonesome. But that's fine, too. She gonna hang out. She gonna turn up and have a good time. Rashida again tells us she ain't worrying about no more d bullshit. So they all sit down, you know, kind of like panel style and... They talk about the positives in their relationship. I said, oh, this is a change for love and hip-hop. Okay, positive. Child, we didn't know that on this show. <laughs> Tammy says, even though you've been fucking around, D-Lo, I'm glad you showed up because you guys' relationship is a lot to throw away. <sighs> I was like, I mean, I guess that does mean something. But I, maybe Tammy wasn't the person that I wanted to hear that come from. But you know what that damn d lo said? Instead of the nigga just saying, thank you, he got to put a little salt in it. He's like, thank you, you know, I really appreciate the support. Nigga, ain't nobody fucking trying to support your black ass and you out here fucking strippers and getting them pregnant. What the fuck is this? He has so much fucking nerve. You got these, let me tell you, these frost facts ain't gonna, they, they, they not gonna get me today. Anyways, Treasure's there as well with Jock, you know, she's sort of the uninvited guest. So she get to talking about D-Lo and Rashida. Now, bitch, you don't know these two. Why are you saying anything is beyond me but she get to talking about how her friend kiana knows um d lo and supposedly she was fucking around with him too and everybody was just like whoa 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 wait a minute you know rashida how dare you don't even know me and trying to talk on my life and say <laughs> just like, and Ben treasure really was talking like she thought it was okay but she was just like this is where i leave because I'm not going to be talking and I'm not going to be discussing my relationship. So she get up and Tammy was just like, no, 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 you're not going to leave. Okay, they was trying to get Treasure to leave. And uh, Jessica, because she was looking over at that bitch and sizing her up real good. This nigga did a different approach to the fight. You know, we used to motherfuckers jumping up and running over to somebody. Nah, baby, that ain't what Jessica did this time. <laughs> Honey, Jessica walked over there and looked like she was going to hit for Rashida. And all of a sudden, she took a real quick left. And she grabbed the shit out of Treasure's head. And, honey, she yanked and yanked and yanked. Them damn security came right, running up there. And all of I said, bitch, that's how you fucking get into a fight on this show. Jessica Dyer was like, how this motherfucker going to get up in here and be talking about your fucking relationship like you know something? That treasure was just like, bitch, fuck you. How you gonna be talking to me? You supposed to be a woman. And Jessica Dime was like, I'm a woman and I still kick that ass. You not gonna do it today. Rashida was real happy that she didn't have to dumb herself down to fight. Jessica was like, bitch, I'll dumb down any day. I'll fuck a bitch up if I have to. Because we not. it was old Chrissy move from original love and hip hop, okay? Remember Chrissy had to be Kimbella ass in the name of uh, Emily because Emily wasn't gonna do it. Okay, it was the exact same thing. So that was a whole bunch of points for Jessica. Okay, all of a sudden, the heat is off of D-Lo. I really appreciate that because she was really trying it. Today. I said, shut up, stupid ass. Because your ass is still the fucked up ass one up out here. So, you know, ain't nobody giving you no high five because this bitch tried to beat somebody else's asses for you. That was for Rashida. Anyway, while security is trying to get Treasure back together, you know, she trying to get her wig back together, you know. She was like, fuck you, bitch. You a hoe like I'm a hoe. I said, bitch, I guess that's a positive affirmation for that ass, okay? <laughs> I guess Treasure, you know, every morning before she get dropped off by the Uber at work, she look in the mirror and she say, Treasure, you a hoe. All right, thank you for the ride. I said, these motherfuckers need something to be proud about these days. Is this what the bitches is calling themselves now? Back in the room, Treasure doesn't understand why everybody is mad at her. Because she's just trying to keep it real, and she's just telling them what it is. I mean, everybody else was talking about D-Lo and Rashida's relationship, so why couldn't she chime in? Jock was like, you really thought it was okay to let that dumb ass shit come out of your mouth. And she was just like, yeah, I thought it was okay because everybody else was talking about it, so why can't I talk about it? You know what? I got a problem with you, Jock, coming here and making me feel bad about something that I did. I thought you was going to be in my car. I thought you was going to have my back and everything, but you know, you can get out too. I said... <laughs> Jock was just like, fuck your story. You gonna learn soon enough that you just can't be saying whatever the fuck you wanna say. She was just like, no, them motherfuckers are just fake. And they all act like they friends, but they all talk about each other behind each other's back. The point of this whole thing, though, Treasure, is you are not any of their friends. So why did you think that was okay? Girl, I really truly believe that she thought that that was okay. But, um... Again, it's the Frost Facts, child. I, I be getting sidetracked because, you know, of the audacity. Shout out to Malaysia. <laughs> O-R-D-A-C-I-T-Y. <laughs> it was stupid, you know, so Jock was just like, peace. 
fine. Okay, I'm through with you. We ain't got to see each other no more. So later on, they go on a boat ride. And again, the gang is all there. And, you know, they all laugh and giggle about how Jessica beat that bitch ass, you know, for her talking slick out the side of her mouth. And, you know, Jessica was like, I got everybody back, bitch. This ought to get me a spot on the next season. I said, no, bitch, what's going to get you the spot is that you done brought your man on the show. And Mona's going to figure out the way to ruin that relationship. <laughs> Speaking of her man, right when they're about to sail off, he shows up. And she's just like, oh, mommy. I mean, you can look at her until she really does love him. That is the thing. Like, y'all, I was looking. I was just like, oh, y'all love me a surprise. I live for them kind of moments. So now we're about to go on this trip. We get Carly. She talks about, you know, Jock. And he needs to apologize for her. But you know what? She ain't going to worry about that right now. We're going to toast to the good life. Okay, y'all saw that side view of Carly and her booty and the sheer and all. I said what in the world I mean it was really almost like a, on the whole Kim Kardashian like this huge butt these little skinny ass legs girl that sheer ain't hiding nothing Jock was just like oh you know what Carly you ain't got to worry about nothing because treasure ain't here no more and you gonna get this dick tonight he ain't he can't be worried about Caesar okay she thought that was so funny I was like, but are you going to get it, though? Carly seemed to be happy with that. So, uh, yeah, the dinner cruise seemed to be a success. Well, it wasn't dinner. Just cruise. Back on the mainland, Waka has reserved a piano room, and they're listening to Tammy's song, and everybody is enjoying it. They love it all. Waka says that he will never drag her down again. Okay, and we all the witness, Waka. Tammy says, you know what? Love always prevails, and love is worth it. So even though um, Jessica's watching the bad that has happened with Rashida and D-Lo, um, with Waka and Tammy, it is all worth it in the end. And then to piggyback off of her, is his name Sean? I think his name is Sean. Sean starts to talk about how him and Jessica, you know, became an item and how they've known each other for a long time and you know he's ready to make a make it official and he pulls out something he was like you remember this and she was like yeah that's your grandmother's whatever it was and he was like yeah but I wanted to know if you want to you know if you really want to do this and he opens it up and it's her beautiful ring her ring is very classy and beautiful it's a marquee and um it has like invisible diamond settings around it. I mean it is beautiful she was just like <gasps> Now, I don't know if it was that was really when it happened or if they recreated it, but she looked very touched, and I was very touched, and everybody else there seemed very shocked and touched, too. So I was just like, oh, oh I tell you, I love this kind of, y'all know Rocky, right? Rocky love, love. I want every motherfucker to be in love, right? So I was really, really touched about it. And then for him to actually just sit there and talk about how he knew he loved her and how he knew that she was the one and, you know, there was an accident and tore up the Rolls Royce and all he could think about was whether or not she was good. And he thinks about, I was just like, this is all, this all does my heart good. Jessica, bitch, if you don't get this nigga off this show because it is too genuine and too good to be fucked up by the fool of fucking niggatry on this goddamn show. All right, you guys, let me get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is Sports Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye. Uh -huh.